I hope, I hope, that I fixed it. But I won't know for sure until I'm able to get the car down and take it for a drive. But I now have to transition to the front of the car so I can get started there. All right, so here we are around at the front of the car. And as you see, I was alluding to earlier, this right here is the upper strut mount. And as you can see, the top of my coilovers are peeking through, but I cannot get to any of the adjustments at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that three and one eighths a hole saw, and I'm gonna cut, circle around and open this up so I will be able to make some camber adjustments. Now in order for to be able to do that, I am going to first have to jack the car up and get it up on jack stands. And I'm gonna see if I can actually get to my um, front end links by just turning the wheels instead of taking them off. But if I can't, I will let you guys know. After an unscheduled wardrobe change, I'm back. And I already got the car jacked up in the air. The front end's jacked up in the air now. And I think what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm going to leave the front wheels on. I'm just gonna turn them, disconnect the front end link, and then come up top and disconnect, un I mean, excuse me, unbolt the uh, top of the coilover from the strut tower. And then that way, I should have plenty of space to be able to use a hole saw and ensure that I'm not gonna hit anything. And then um, I'm gonna do both sides and then I will put the new uh, adjustable end links on before I lower the car and double check everything. So hopefully it goes to plan, but if not, I will keep you guys updated. As you know, <clears throat> that didn't take long. So I'm back with a quick update. Leaving the wheels on is not gonna work. There's not enough room for me to get my hands in there and do what I gotta do. So I'm gonna take the wheels off and then continue from there. All right, as you can see, coilovers out of the way and I've got plenty of space. I can go drill down and make sure I don't hit anything so we're good there. And I was talking about this earlier, but uh, allow me to elaborate on it a little bit. So the upper strut mount right here, this hole is not big enough to be able to adjust the camera on my coilovers. So what I did was I ordered a three and one eighth uh, hole saw. This is a Milwaukee hole dozer. And um, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to stay inside of uh, this upper strut bar right here. And 3 and one eighths fits perfectly. So uh, I should be able to get in here and adjust my camber much easier now than what I've been doing before. And um, at first I was a little apprehensive to do this. I've seen other people do it, so that gave me the confidence to go ahead and do it. But um, the thing you wanna remember is number one, you are going to need some kind of lubrication on these teeth to make sure that it's going to cut all the way through. You don't wanna wear teeth down. Number two, uh, this is a carbide tooth uh, hole saw. It is not the bimetal. The bimetal will not cut this. So make sure you get a carbide tooth uh, hole saw. Number three, make sure you wear eye protection because you got a chance for metal shards and splinters to get everywhere. Um, and number four, it's just take your time. Um, try to go slow, maintain a decent speed and everything should go great. Um, and another thing that I will add that I will show you guys later on is when you cut this, there will be exposed metal. So make sure you run out and grab some primer and some paint. You're going to want to paint this and have a nice coating on it to ensure it's not going to rust later. 
But for now, I've got butterflies getting ready to do this step. But, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta go big, so let's do it. So when you finish cutting through, you will end up with this, which is the outer top piece. And then there was another little inner piece that I had to saw through. And then when you're done, you will have a three and one eighth inch hole in the top that you can now do your camber adjustments. I am going to grab my Dremel and kind of clean this up a bit before I put some primer and paint on it. VHT epoxy paint. This is the same stuff that I used when I painted my crash bar. Um, it's self priming, it's all weather, and it is rust and salt resistant. So I am going to use some rubbing alcohol in this, get all the oils and everything, and make sure it's clean. And then I'm going to spray it with this, and then I'm going to go start on the other side, and then we will pick this back up when I put the end links on the driver's side. I'm getting ready to begin uh, reinstalling the coilover on the driver's side of the car, and I needed to replace the end links, as you all know. This is the stock end link. Um, as you can see, mine broke, and then I just spent an hour with the Dremel cutting it out, cutting the nut off of it so I could get it out of the sway bar. That was fun. And uh, as you can see, this one, it was due to be replaced. It's the original. My car has like 60 something thousand miles on them. So it was time. And what I'm replacing it with is this unit from Master Speed System. Um, they make a lot of uh, suspension components for the F body crowd. They also make some for the Focus ST and RS. So I decided to give these a go. And the first thing you notice is that they are adjustable. And one of the reasons why I want to add adjustable uh, in links to the front of the car is I'm lowered, I'm lower than stock, and with the stock um, end link, it was pr it was loading up the sway bar a lot, and it was causing the steering to have like this weird feeling to it. It was like very vague for the first couple degrees that you turn it, and then you would start getting steering feedback, and I just didn't like it, um, especially when I start to accelerate and I get in the boost, and in third gear, you get the, the third gear shimmy, from the torque steer and with that vague feeling in the steering I just didn't like it at all so I decided to go ahead and install a set of these um, one of the things I liked is that they have a pretty low profile to the head of them so I should not have any clearance issues I know that with the Moogs sometimes you run into an issue of them uh, hitting the fender well so Hopefully with these, I should not have an issue. They come with all of the hardware necessary to install them. So this should be fairly straightforward. And I am going to get this installed and then I can see about reinstalling the coilover and then I can button up this side of the car. All right. First thing I wanna show you guys is that now you can see I can make my camber adjustments now and I put that black paint around it and hopefully I'll keep that from rusting. So up here, everything is good. Down here, you can see that I now have my massive speed front end link installed. And you can see, got the bolts there and the bolt down there. One of the things that I like about the massive speed uh, end link is that it has a 14 millimeter nut and then there is a 13 millimeter nut that you can actually access on the backside to help you tighten these down as well. It gives you something to put a wrench on when you go to take these off. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate having that as I fought for an hour 
trying to get the stock end link undone and this is just gonna be much easier as well when I'm ready to make adjustments all I have to do is come in here loosen these lock nuts and rotate the cylinder to add preload or to take it out so I am pretty excited to get this car buttoned up and get it on the ground and see if I made an improvement to my steering. Before I put the car down, I'm gonna check and retorque all my bolts. I'm gonna check that rear end link because I really don't want it to make any noise anymore. I'm going to check this front end link and then check the bolts that goes for the top mount for my coilovers. And then I'm gonna be really excited to be able to put this car on the ground. Number one, I can finally adjust my camber properly without going through hoops. And number two, I can also play with the preload for the front sway bar and see if I can get some of the feeling back into my steering. Hopefully you guys learned something today, and if you do, as always, hit that like button as well. Make sure to smash subscribe and click the little bell. These videos are gonna be coming out fast and furious. I have a lot more things that I'm working on and you're not gonna to wanna to miss what's coming up next. So it is getting into the early evening here. I still have the passenger side of the car to do, so I'ma get to it. Hope you guys are enjoying your evening and I will see you all on the next one. taking the car for a spin it still makes the noise but there has been an interesting development I pushed down on this side of the car and you can hear it and I think I might have finally found my culprit fingers crossed